Yes, hello my friends, it's been a while hasn't it, but I am back with another video describing what I would like to see in the next main Dynasty Warriors game, providing they don't just reboot the whole series and they make a Dynasty Warriors 10. Now, quite a lot of what I'm going to say in this video will be massively optimistic, but let's face it, Koei will have to put out the best game they possibly can, especially after Dynasty Warriors 9 managed to create a divide in the community and fanbase wider than your mum's legs. So I'm going to split this video into a few different ideas of what I would like to see and why I think it would be good, as well as try and explain why some of the features in this series just don't work. So as a word of warning, if you don't like this series being criticised, maybe it's best that you don't watch. With that being said, there are a few things that I need to state before we get started. Open world, been it. It clearly didn't work and is just going to be a one trick pony for this series. They can't really use it again for this for this series. A bit of a controversial opinion now, open world could have worked for Warriors Orochi 4 or you know Warriors All Stars as those series they're not bound to having to stick with you know making the whole of China like Dynasty Warriors. They're free to make whatever world they feel like. They can make it as big or as small as they want and all the enemies are you know monsters so you can have such a variety in enemies not just you know blokes with swords and shields and stuff but let's face it open world dynasty warriors is empty i think the only time open world would work with dynasty warriors if it was strike force 3 but that will never happen i mean open world clearly didn't work for dynasty warriors 9 and probably won't work if samurai warriors tries to do the same mainly because of the historical setting in dynasty warriors especially all of the action is based here on the map of China, leaving all this massive area with nothing happening in it. And even areas where the battles do take place, there's still not really anything to do. If anything, they made the world too big. I think that just really shows how, you know, empty the game is in general. The places where the battles are, there's nothing happening, and the battles don't even take up 50% of the map. Pitiful. Most people will know what I think about Dynasty Warriors 9, well, especially after that, so I will try not to mention it too much if I can, but if people need a refresher, for me, Dynasty Warriors 9 was one of the worst games last year. Um, better games included, you know, Warriors Archie 4, uh, cer certainly a lot better, and um, every other game released yet last year, including bootleg versions of Dynasty Warriors 9, were better than it. So, you know, I, I would say Dynasty Warriors 9 was pretty bad. And it did end up on quite a lot of people's top 10 worst games of last year. So if you're still in denial about this game being bad, I don't know where you got your lobotomy. So what should they keep from Dynasty Warriors 9? Now, you'd actually be surprised by this, and I'm not going to say nothing. Now, surprisingly, what ideas I would keep from Dynasty Warriors 9 is actually the hypothetical DLCs. I know, except I'd probably extend it so you could play as more characters and not just be limited to the one character. I haven't actually played them myself because I'm not a shill and I can think of better ways to use 50 gigabytes of data on my PS4 over reinstalling Dynasty Warriors 9 and playing it. But from what I've seen and heard, all the character stories aren't the same and it does show that Koei does have some original ideas. I think why I like this idea is that it reminds me of the new stages that were added in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends. So previously I've said I would have liked uh, some of the stages in 8 Extreme Legends to be full stories, like what would happen if, you know, Lu Bu really did join Wei, or if Zhu Geliong didn't join Lu Bei and Zhu Xu did. So, you know, I think that's really cool ideas. I would, I would certainly keep that. But what should be changed from Dynasty Warriors 9? Pretty much everything. Story. Now, what I'm going to say here will put me in a very small minority. Hell, I might be the only person that says this, but I personally think that the whole idea of them retelling the whole story again and again is getting really old. I'm not saying drop it completely, but Dynasty Warriors 7 and 9 told it in such detail, uh, one of those games telling it better than the other, that if they do it again, it's just going to become really, really tiresome. Yeah, okay, they changed some of the details here and there, like... Simisher's injury is caused by a different source each time, but I really think that staying so rigidly to the story is kind of one of the downfalls of the series. Like for Dynasty Warriors 9, we already knew what was going to happen next with 90% of that game, 
Yeah, much like this video, the game decided we needed to know every little detail of what was going on. It just kind of felt, you know, pointless in a way, and very ham-fisted. So what I'm really saying is the story needs to take a bit of a backseat, which in turn would actually help the gameplay. Obviously, I'm not saying fuck all of it, but have the story a bit looser. This would help the game more because you can make characters live past their deaths or retirement or whatever, meaning people get to play as their favourite characters for as long as they want. So more in line with, you know, Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4. Having characters that only have a couple of stages is downright laughable when Koei put the effort into making them new attacks, designs, and voice lines. I'm sure most people that played Zhu Xu's story in Dynasty Warriors 9 were disappointed in how short it was. For me, it was Diao Chan, which I'll talk about in another time. Having hypotheticals allows the fans to play as the characters they love more. We get some fresh story to bite into, and the writers get to flex their creative muscles. With that being said, most of Koei's games are based on someone else's intellectual property, but that's irrelevant while I was talking about, you know, Dynasty Warriors. One thing they could do is have the Dynasty Warriors 4 system of being able to choose which battles you take part in, but obviously expand upon that and link it into optional dialogue between characters and such, which you could have in Castle Towns. I think it's probably going to be difficult to put into words what I envision. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds pretentious as fuck. But anyway, so, stage selection could be set up much like Dynasty Warriors 4, where you get the story laid out before you. You could even do the, you know, Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 map style thing. From there, you get to select the stage you want to go to, as well as a couple of other options, like going to your castle town, character setup, so you can change equipment, change the characters themselves and select extra slash bonus stages if you've unlocked them through talking to other characters in the town or completing certain stages or doing certain requirements in the stages which they could also implement as just an extra stage in that chapter as opposed to a separate one like on the screen now. Um, I also think that all forces should get hypotheticals or if that's too much for the other factions because of the lack of stages they could just do you know the Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4 thing I've just totally making up the story for them. So in Dynasty Warriors 8 obviously there's only one hypothetical route each. I like the idea but they weren't exactly the greatest stories. I mean Wei spent a stage fighting Zosur because you know he was he was more important than taking out Wu piece by piece. But whatever. So um, some new hypotheticals. Uh, you could just use the stages from Extreme Legends as a base for the new route. Obviously that would be an issue for some as they're based on losing a major battle. So they could be implemented by choosing to ignore that battle, talking to allies, doing certain requirements, or something to that effect, or just doing battles in a certain order. So here are some hypothetical routes. For Wei, Shu gets wiped out of Changban, so it's you know Wei versus a coalition of Wu and other smaller warlords. Uh, Ma Teng succeeds in killing Sao Tso and Sao Pi takes over as ruler. Uh, Lu Bu joins, uh, so much like Extreme Legends. Uh, lose the Battle of Guandu. Uh, Yuan Shu and Sun Tse join up and actually become a major force in the land. So it's a sort of a three-way power struggle between Yuan Shu, Yuan Shao and uh, Sao Tso. So that'd be quite interesting. So for Wu, because obviously I've said they shouldn't kill characters. I've decided to get rid of the Sun Jian and Sun Tzu no death thing. So you could have you could have Wu side with Yuan Shu for longer or you know just use them as a bit of a puppet or something like that. Um, you defeat Lu Bu instead of Sao Tzu so you gain that bit of China and sort of spread out your seed that way. Uh, win the Battle of Heifei. No Shu Wu alliance so no Sun Shang Shang and Lu Bei show you plan. Uh, Shu you take over Jing province, so a bit like Zhu Xu's hypothetical route. Side with Yuan Shao after Guangdu. Tia Chan doesn't die and Lu Bei stays in that area, so a bit like the Sun Tzu Lu Bu idea. And Lu Bu doesn't betray Lu Bei or you save him from being executed at the Battle of Xia Pi. Other category characters, now this is always going to be a bit of a problem for the series as the other characters, while they are some of the most interesting ones, they aren't as involved in the later parts of the story and do their own little things to the side without that much involvement from the three main kingdoms. So much like Dinosaur Wars 4, they 
wouldn't have as access to as many stages, but I have thought of some hypotheticals for them anyway. So you won Shao, uh, you defeat Sao Tso, and then you fight Liu Bei and Sun Tzu. So a little bit like in XL when you do the Battle of Chibi. You could even have Dong Zhuo live, so the final battle will be like old rivals settling things once and for all. A Dong Zhuo's faction, which is now the biggest other faction, because you can include all of Lu Bu's forces in there as well. You could recruit Sun Jian, much like he wanted to in the book. Uh, Yuan's team up and defeat him, so you know Yuan Shu and Yuan Shao live until the end. Um, you could have him defeat the coalition. You know, it, all this good stuff. There's so many sort of options for him now because he's quite a big faction and he's one of the major players right at the start of the game. Uh, Nan Man, uh, Guan Suo and Bao Son Yang could be added to their story. So you have quite a few more stages. Just do it as a bit of a jokey one, like in Dynasty Warriors 4 where they trying to find the people that invade their land and then they go by boat and end up in Shuchang. Do you know, just... Just, you know, something stupid like that. So yellow turbans now. Uh, because there's only one playable character for them, you could brainwash enemy officers so you can play as them and um, have that as a comical route. That'd be quite fantastic. And because obviously they only get one stage at the start, you can literally do whatever you want with them. Or if you do it like, like Dynasty Wars 4, which I said again, you could have, you know, yellow turban menace, yellow turban fortress, yellow turban rebellion etc etc just you know have it so you fight you know Dong Zhuo then Yuan Shao and then Shu Wei blah 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 Lu Bu now you could just do the route from Dynasty Wars 8 XL obviously change the ending a little bit um, add Lu Ling Chi to the hypothetical route um, you could even add the Dynasty Wars 6 stories you know where Lu Bu basically does everything for Diao Chan and you could have Chen Gong and Lu Ling Chi suspicious of her. Or you could just do, you know, Lu Bu's route from 6. That'd be pretty cool. Or you could even have it so you ally with Yuan Shu from the start and take over everything. Or you could stay with Dong Zhuo and betray him after uniting the land. Now, to be fair with the other characters, I wouldn't be opposed to them just having the, you know, campaign against so-and-so stages again. But make them use some different stages at least, because four of the five other kingdoms had those stages and it got old after a while. Now Jin is the only one I've decided to not really talk about. Um, they're a bit of a strange case for a few reasons. Firstly, they start later than everyone else. I mean, in 9, Shin Shong Yang started at Chibi. And secondly, the lack of playable characters for the opposing kingdoms and the era of the story is lacking which makes it a bit harder for there to be you know mass variation over the other kingdoms so I haven't really thought of uh, any hypotheticals for Jin you could just do you know what they did for 8 but I'm pretty sure there's people with better ideas than me for stuff like that now all of these hypotheticals would require a lot of stages but there are a few ways around this that I've thought of so firstly you could do the Dynasty Wars 4 way of things and cut and add parts to the stages much like they also did in Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada. B, have the stages at a different time of day. Yes, I'm actually saying they should get rid of the time mechanic from Spirit of Sanada and 9, because it just gives the stages, you know, a bit more of a feeling if you have it set at a time of day. It makes it more sort of rememberable. Like, everybody will remember Hulao Gate from 4 because it's set at night. There's just something about the whole tone and style of some of the stages if you have them in the night versus the day, snow, rain, blah 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 blah. I think having it randomised sort of takes a bit away of that, that magic as it were. Uh, number three, uh, reuse stages from older games, which would be kind of cool for the hypotheticals and is what I actually wish they kind of did for Warriors Archie 4, which was notorious for a reusing of stages. and. You know, the sixth time they decided to reuse Samurai Warriors 4 assets. So, you know, Castle Towns. Like I've mentioned several times already, I think there should be Castle Towns, much like those found in Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada, which could open up the door to several new possibilities. You could have the features found in Spirit of Sanada or Ambition Mode from 8, and have the Blacksmith for, you know, buying up 
buying, selling and upgrading weapons, stables for upgrading and buying new horses, training grounds for passive levelling up of characters, as well as the mock battle thing from Warriors RT4, which everyone seems to think is the best thing since sliced bread. Item sellers, the tea house for buying temporary in battle buffs. You could also have the challenge mode accessible from the castle towns. You could also have an option to duel other officers in your faction there or do it online as you know a bit of a multiplayer thing that would be you know quite cool one thing also mentioned is you could have allied officers stationed in the castle towns which you can go up to for additional story for tips on unlocking additional stages like the hypotheticals could even give hints for how to get hidden items and weapons give tips on game mechanics etc etc you could even make them quest givers for completing certain in-battle feats like the ones found in Dynasty Warriors 8, like defeat X number of enemies with Y attack or whatever. One problem I have sort of thought with adding this feature is that some of the kingdoms, uh, well other characters, change where their home is. So for example, Liu Bei doesn't actually make Chengdu his capital until quite late into the story, so they wouldn't really have access to everything here straight away if they're just using, you know, camps and smaller castles as a base. Didn't really think that through for, the, for some of the other factions and kingdoms and all that. So combat and weapons. For starters, all the old weapons from vanilla Dynasty Warriors 8 should return. Um, 8 obviously getting a Switch release. It's almost like they know that's a good game, isn't it? For Dynasty Warriors 8, the problem with that game kind of is that the combat was Dynasty Warriors 7 but with an actual reason to swap weapons. But at its fundamental level, it's still the same game as the series has been since the PS2 games, which a majority of us all love, but it's done over and over again without any major changes, and it's a bit tiring, which isn't helped by the fact that every Warriors game seems to get at least three or more spin-off games, which leads to series fatigue for quite a few people. Combat, they could just combine the old system with the R1 trigger system, but I think that ship has sailed already as Fate Extella Link has now already done that, and you know what? It's a really good game. Probably because they saw the flaws in the previous game and got rid of them, instead of transforming the series into something that no fan wanted. There's probably people that are going to claim that Koei can't make everyone unique, but I fucking beg to differ. The more I've seen of the Dynasty Warriors 9 DLC weapons, I can't help but think that they never had the intention of making everyone a unique in Dynasty Warriors 9. I mean, look at some of the designs from, ni from 8 to 9 and tell me that they would be out of place in either game. You could take over the designs from 9 and put them in 8 and it would they would look the same. Unlike, you know, the jump from Dynasty Warriors 5 to 6 where characters got a massive redesign thus changing the weapon. I honestly think they chose to clone the weapons so they could add the old ones back in as DLC which you might think is pretty stupid and I do too but you know just look at the fucking idiots eating it up I mean you know build it and they will come build it and people will be fucking stupid I, I, I would rail upon the people that defend clones but that is a video for another time but back to the topic at hand, it is possible for Koei to have this charge attack system and the R1 trigger system. I mean, that system is already in place in Warriors RT4 and Dragon Quest Hero series. The thing is, you probably wouldn't even need to make that many new animations. But before we get too ahead of ourselves and anyone says that it's too much effort, the jump between Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires and vanilla Dynasty Warriors 8 was an additional, and I've got a picture here to help you, 462 plus animations for new mechanics and new movesets, whilst adding in four new attacks to the already existing system in 8 Extreme Legends would only be a total of 362 animations for the 96 characters currently in Dynasty Warriors 9, including the DLC ones. Now those calculations aren't going to be wholly accurate, or really that fair in comparison as the number 362 I pulled out is the technical minimum, providing each character only gets four new attacks with one animation each. And not every character works like that, you have to take into account all the fluff around the outside like grapple attacks, missing particles, etc etc, any additional gimmicks. 
so with this system you could have just three new attacks and have the old R1 circle as the old Masseuse. Or you could even expand upon it and have things like this where when you do a certain input you could have another X attack or even have the old launching attacks from Dynasty Warriors 3 and 4. So, you know, th there is room for improvement. There is so much, you know, potential you could have. It would add a bit of technicality to the characters if you did have, you know, four squares, then R1 triangle, and then that's your launcher attack or whatever. But if you do it on, you know, three squares triangle, it's like just a different attack and whatnot. So, you know, there's, there's room. So the only other changes I'd really have to the combat would be if they got rid of the weapon switch system, which I honestly think they should. Keep the storm rush system but link it to the rage system. So you'd be able to use a storm rush in the same manner as Dynasty Warriors 8, but on anybody, but also have it require that you use a bit of rage bar or some so because storm rushes were massively overpowered and I think it should come at a bit of a cost to any person playing it. But I always thought they were super cool looking, but that obviously means they wouldn't be automatic. You'd have to activate them, which was actually an option patched in into Dynasty Warriors 8. And finally, re-add counter-attacks from the PS2 games. Even have the old timing thing so you, you get punished if you, you know, time it wrong. Koei wouldn't even need to do new attacks for this as they could just reuse the old switch counters. Isn't that lovely? So weapon changes, ideally, like I've said many times, they should go back to the original Dynasty Warriors 8 movesets and combat system for a couple of reasons. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 9's combat was pretty bad, making every character feel the same. I mean, even playing as Lu Bu felt just terrible. How do you even fucking do that? The most overpowered character and he just felt awful. And he was the only unique in that game because of, you know, the weapon changes. The weapon changes in 9 led to clones, which are now decloning as DLC, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest, and let's be honest, that was their plan from the start. Characters like Huang Zhong and Zhu Ron are now being decloned as of Season Pass 3. Three words I didn't want to hear in succession. You know, I actually joked about them going the whole dead or alive route, and they actually did it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, those two, and probably more characters, actually reused their old Dynasty Warriors 8 Masseuse in 9, despite being assigned with a different weapon, which is quite weird. Um, so this this fan base will buy anything put out by Koei, so why wouldn't they sell multiple season passes with reused cut content? Now, I'm not actually against them making new moves as DLC, but making the old weapons as DLC is just pathetic and it actually drives some fans away from the series for good. In future if they want to add new weapons just add new characters. That way you can personalise the moves around the character. It wouldn't annoy people as much and it would appear as more value for money. Anyway back to the topic at hand there were some let's say questionable weapon changes in Dynasty Warriors 8 even which is all down to the fact moves are attached to the weapon type and not the character. So I wouldn't be opposed to them ditching the whole anyone can use any weapon thing if it meant they would let characters have the same weapon but a completely different moveset. But if I'm quite honest, there isn't actually that many movesets I don't enjoy playing as in 8. Except for the horse hair whip and the double trident, as well as um, all of the DLC weapons. It's not that I think they're bad, actually the double trident is a fucking awful weapon, but I really think Sima Yi needs to go back to the feather fan at least, as he's, you know, Zhuge Liang's rival and having them use the same weapon sets them as equals. Interestingly, in Dynasty Warriors 4, both of them actually share the same voice actor, so playing the Battle of Wuzhang Plains is a bit weird, when you know that fact. So that being said, their rivalry isn't actually a big part of the series for quite some time, which is quite sad. As of recording this video, I forgot to mention that the DLC characters might need new weapons as they were all cloned, so here are some ideas. Uh, Yuan Shu, um, have the rapier still, but have some of his attacks, probably the Masos, involve the Imperial Seal. Okay, it wouldn't make any narrative sense playing as him before he owns it, but then neither did much of the stuff in Dynasty Warriors 7 when characters changed weapons 
or you know why Wei Yan gets a three star weapon skill with the twin swords. You know anyway the Imperial Seal is a main part about that character and leads to his overall arrogance so you know you could make him a bit of a jokey character. You could even give him the horsehair whip although I think that'd be a pretty dumb idea. Dong Bai, I don't really know. Like I don't think really any weapon suits her when I think about it. In Dynasty Warriors Blast she has the baton which I kind of like the idea of but you know Zhuga Daniel has that weapon but she's the kind of character that I think could do with a concealed weapon so kind of like no from Samurai Warriors you could even give her you know a bladed umbrella so it'd be even more of a gothic Lolita <laughs> than uh, than she already is now but think more Yagu from Senran Kagura and not Okuni from Samurai Warriors but um, yeah, let me know what you think would be a good weapon for her because I honestly don't think you know anything really sort of suits her. So Hua Shong, uh, so only a slight change. Give him the mace and declone Pong De to the twin halberds again. For me, this would be win-win. The mace feels like a weapon who is for someone who's a bit wild. Hua Shong fits this and it's not too far away from the club and fulfills the same purpose basically. Pong De's always looked pretty weird with the mace and I feel he needs some justice since his re-edition where he was cloned straight away and then didn't even make it to the next spin-off game and he was already given the mace which never looked right on him. So you know just give him a new moveset of the Twin Halberds. Not not Twin Axes, despite his theme song in Seven Extreme Legends. Give him actual actual Halberds, like, you know, two of Lu Bu's ones. Obviously, don't make him look like that, but, you know, you know what I mean? L big, long things. Jahu G, uh, none. She should be cut from the series. Uh, end of. But if they don't cut her, which um, I, I honestly see Koei doing, uh, she should get the, the Plugal sticks, or whatever they were, and uh, give Da Chiao the Iron Fan, uh, and Xiao Chiao to get the Twin Fans. So, in that way, an awful character like Shahu Ji can be paired with an equally awful weapon, and then no one will have to play as her. So, um, yeah, so those characters are the only ones I'd change. Maybe you wouldn't even need to change weapons, but just, you know, make their moves better, as I've always said. Changing characters' weapons every single time gets a bit frustrating, to be honest. I think shows how much Koei really cares about this series, as they would rather destroy and rebuild and annoy people, to say the least, instead of actually fixing an issue. And ever since Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, where they added that new mechanic where you can aim shots, I think, honestly, the, the crossbow should have actually been getting some of those attacks. That would have been a really cool idea. Make it more of a technical thing. So you are stationary, but then you also have to aim some of your attacks, but make them a bit more powerful. That would have been a really cool idea instead of, you know, changing a character's complete persona in a spin-off game so they are the exact opposite of how they were for the main series. Absolute fucking madness. So weapon and item system. To be honest, this is something I haven't really thought about that much in terms of what they should be adding or removing. I think the system they put in place for the next game, they really need to sort of look at how difficult they want to make the game and how much they want the difficulty to be based on player skill, enemy AI, game mechanics or whatever. What I'm trying to say really is that the older games, there wasn't such a reliance on weapon skills and items in a way. I mean obviously there was to a degree but the games are challenging and fun no matter what the difficulty. I mean even in some of the stages in four extreme legends it didn't let you have items so obviously the game was balanced enough to let you go in there with nothing while the newer games there's such a jump between playing on normal and the hardest difficulty which is usually ultimate as much as i really do like the system in dinosaurs 8 and expansions there's attributes and elements that are too powerful that they overshadow the others they could, you know, buff the less used ones by adding extra effects, like Inferno could increase the damage over time the longer you juggle enemies or based on your combo count. Or they could add passive buffs to some, like 
Desperation, which doubles your attack when near death and getting up off the ground, you could add a passive buff of 7% extra attack power at all times, for example. I've listed some more examples on the screen now. So for items, items returning would be nice, you know, the classics as well as some rare items, which, you know, add some additional mechanics or whatever. Another thing they sort of really need to balance out is the difference between randomization and, you know, actually building a weapon. In Dynasty Warriors 9, one of the main flaws for me was that you go out and find the materials, and then when you go and make an orb, which were your augments to your attacks that give the elemental effects, it was all randomized and that was unbelievably annoying. So I think keeping the Dynasty Wars 8 system is certainly the best choice. And just to expand upon that, um, it was a system, you know, most people loved and think was good, which is which is actually just a variation of the system found in Warriors Archie, which, you know, is quite nice. You could even have the color coding of the attributes and stuff like that. You could even limit how many you know, gold abilities you have, how many silver abilities you have on a weapon, and bronze. So you can only have a certain amount, a bit like Samurai Warriors 3, which limits how many times you can change skills on your weapons. So, you know, stuff like that. They need to find a, a balance between randomization and, you know, customization, as it were. So new character additions. Now I'm going to be the black sheep of the family and say no more characters. In fact, I would argue the opposite and say that some characters need to be cut. But that would basically have the same effect as cloning some characters' iconic weapons. And wouldn't really make sense because if you cut someone as a character, you'd basically just have to ignore them from the story. Which for Dynasty Warriors 6 they did for Pongda and Jung Wei, as they weren't even generic officers or even mentioned for that matter. Although, Two of the characters I dislike, Zosa and Jahuji, you could remove without any consequence because they're never, they've never been found as generics. Um, I mean, you could remove any of the female characters and you'd still get the same effect. There's members of the Sun family that aren't mentioned as being Sun Jian's sons. So if you remove Sun Shang Shang, you wouldn't even have to mention her. You know what I mean? So anyway, Adding characters is weirdly the only thing that Koei listened to the fanbase for, and ironically, is one of the main contributors to the game's lacking any major progression, because any change made to the core gameplay needs to be added to every single character, hence the clones in Dynasty Warriors 9, and the combat from 7 to 8 basically being the same. Having this many characters is just unsustainable without a sacrifice in some form, so there we go, that is my reason for not adding new characters, at least in the base game. If you want to add them in as, you know, DLC, you know, have them implemented in that way. Because if you're going to take a hit to the story, having a DLC character is not really going to make a difference. But, you know. So, other modes. For other modes, they could do whatever they please, really. It's one of the reasons why I love the games. Because Koei can come up with some, you know, quite good stuff. Obviously, there's been quite a bit of reusing old modes. Extreme modes and variations of it appear across several Warriors games. Dynasty Warriors 4, 5, Samurai Warriors 3, Z, and Ambition mode are all variations of that. And Challenge mode is quite common too, even though it's never really been that popular from what I've seen and heard. Like I've said in old videos talking about what I'd like to have seen in Dynasty Warriors 9, I still think the Ambition mode is quite a good idea, but you can customise your own castle with online features. Would you know, still be good and implement online matchmaking so you can siege other people's castles, although that would be a bit of an undertaking to do, making a map and having somebody's personal castle there. However, I did actually think of something else for this. So basically, you could have a mode that combines the idea of ambition mode as well as conquest mode. So you would get the, you know, hexagonal grid map of conquest mode but instead of set battles and legendary battles, yes, they were nice, but were too short and weren't the kind of stages that you would play over and over again. So instead of those battles, you could have randomized battles, like the, you know, bigger battles in con conquest mode. You know, the ones that didn't really have any context to them, but have different conditions like normal defeat the commander, rescue allies, escort merchant, etc, etc. As well as keeping the idea of being able to go into castle towns across the map of China. You could also even have it so you'd have to make it from one castle town to another in succession, a bit like 
extreme mode. The longer you keep going around without going to another castle town, the greater your rewards are. The only problem with that is if you died, I'm not sure how they would sort that. If you could just, you know, select a stage. Or I suppose they could implement a system where, so after your first stage, you can select the second one and it gives you an option. Do you want to make the game more difficult? and get better rewards, you know, Y or N. So if you say no, it's just like the same difficulty for the next stage and you're free to do whatever you want. Or you can increase the difficulty and get better rewards than that. I also think they should keep some of the, you know, hidden secret items and or horses there. Like the Battle for Supremacy was still one of the best battles in seven i think that's that's still probably one of the most fun ones so you know they could they could even keep stuff like that so other miscellaneous stuff a bit of a quick fire round on this one english voices preferably the professional ones from dynasty wars 8 and before obviously um the dynasty wars 9 voices were coma inducingly bad the english dubs are part of the charm for this series although i do realize how much it costs for them to implement that many voice actors but if you look at Dynasty Warriors 8 the amount of fluff around the outside for voice lines I mean Zhang Liao has voice lines for meeting each of Guan Yu's sons in battle like we don't need that I don't need a conversation between Zhang Liao and Guan Sua that's not that's not needed I don't need voice lines between Lu Shun and Yuan Shao but do you really think that's important for a character you're only going to meet once that I've never heard. I've never heard any of those voice lines because of the way ambition mode works, as soon as you unlock a character, you don't lose them until you use them as a bodyguard. So the chances of you actually meeting these characters in battle under those certain certain circumstances is so minuscule and yet they decided, oh yeah, fucking I need I need all these voice lines of characters I'm never gonna meet. Just utterly pointless. They the amount of fluff that surround the outside that's just going to be ignored by everybody. Just keep the voices to the stuff in the story um, and in battle, stuff that's going to be a bit more difficult to read whilst playing the game. Although, you know, some people seem to think you can read the whole story whilst playing something like Samurai Warriors 4, but, you know, whatever. You, you could even leave the optional dialogue in Castle Towns as just text. You know, that there's your massive savings. As long as they do it for all the languages and don't don't go and do a Dynasty Wars 8 where, you know, every everything needed to be voiced in Japanese, but when it came to English, we didn't even get a fucking narrator. That is, that's pathetic. So, you know, sorry, I went on a bit of a bit of a tangent there, but you know what I mean? They should bring back the, the decent voices because it's part of the charm. It makes the games extremely camp and funny. Um, part of the overall charm. Now, quite a lot of the people that defend uh, just the traditional Japanese voices there are also people that seem to think this the series is so fucking important to you know hit, to tell the story 200 times in a row instead of you know actually focusing on the fucking gameplay in a game but you know whatever so jewels to return I really like that idea from Dungeon Warrior 6 it was probably actually the best idea they reintroduced but you had no choice in taking part you were just forced into them and on top of that it wasn't even 1v1 all the time Sometimes you could be fighting up to at least six officers, leaving you in an endless loop of fighting generics. Meaning if your allies were actually in trouble, it was actually quite difficult to sort of get out and run away. So I would least like to be able to accept or decline the duel, which you could include, you know, the Dynasty Warriors 4 type scenes. But uh, the game wouldn't cut away, it would just make it, you know, sort of seamless between the gameplay and the officer challenging you. Or even better, if they brought back the taunts from Dynasty Warriors 4, you could use them to challenge enemy officers. But if you offer a duel, it makes the enemies even more powerful as, you know, a bit of a way to stop players from doing it to every officer they come across. Or you could just, you know, add a rank system. So if somebody's a higher rank than you, they're less likely to accept a duel or something like that. So um, probably the main other bit, which I think is most likely they will actually add to this series. So unique NPCs, as well as the next bit I'm going to say, um, you could add them in the same way as they did in Dynasty Warriors 9, or even do this Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada method of having them as custom character parts, which leads me into the most likely thing I think they will do. Uh, have custom characters, which you can override generic officers, much like the Empire series, but 
if they're needed in a stage and in cutscenes, they'll still use the generic op model. Uh, just add disclaimers if it's too much work. You could even have them in the event scenes as well, like, you know, the old ones where if you come across Lubu and all that stuff. You know, that would be a really cool idea. That would... And, you know, have the online features from Eight Empires where you can upload and share them with people. That would, that would be really, really cool. I'm not sure if they would have the system where you can use anybody's mesos or you'd be having to stick with other people's you know preset attacks and all that stuff but you know that'd be that'd be really cool um obviously having custom characters opens up the avenue for just mass and massive dlc costumes you could add which you know people people will buy custom characters is something in this series that people just you know love a bit of a quick fire now pc port is always pretty bad uh, they really need to put some more effort in it. I mean, there's a video by Total Biscuit saying let's not let's not play Koei Tecmo's PC ports because they're so bad. From what I've seen for Dynasty Warriors 9, it wasn't as bad, but was still quite unplayable for quite a lot of people. I'm not sure if that's just because people don't know how PC requirements work or whatever, but, you know. Uh, weapon models, uh, new ones. Uh, they should be adding more, give players more choice. If they, if they do somehow keep the Heaven, Earth and Man system, uh, you could change the models, so Heaven weapons get a different model, Earth weapons get a different model, Man weapons get a different model. That'd be quite cool. Secret weapons, I think they should do the two-tier system, which they eventually implemented in Extreme Legends, so you get a fifth weapon, but have that on hard, or you can do it on higher difficulties, and then your sixth weapon you have to get on Chaos or harder. And uh, finally, multiplayer, much like Warriors Archie 4, which, because it only had one map and wasn't promoted that well, died relatively quickly. I think you could just have normal battles, but have people on the opposite sides. That'd be, you know, quite cool. Yeah, so if you did the Battle of Hulai Gate, you'd get one side which are the allies, one side which is Dong Zhuo's forces. You know, that'd be a really cool idea. You could also implement stuff like escort merchant to here and there and what lot bit, bit like sort of payload match types in you know first person shooters and stuff like that you could also you could basically implement dynasty warriors over any sort of successful well even free to play multiplayer games i think it would work i also iron unironically think that battle royale would actually work for for a Warriors game, because at least it'd be sort of unique. Obviously, don't make it, so you have to go to scavenge stuff. But if you just had like a bit of a big map and uh, free for all, that'd be you know really cool. I think adding multiplayer to a series like Dynasty Warriors would increase the longevity of the game. Also, if you kept people that active for that long, it'd be easier to sell DLC to them because uh, people would have more of a vested interest in playing the games instead of you know. YouTubers that have Dynasty Warriors as their primary thing they play, meaning they're like the only people that buy the DLC and then spread that to their fans a bit like, you know, AIDS in a third world village. Basically I'm saying if the longer you keep the game active, the more likely you are to sell DLC to people, whereas, you know, since Dynasty Warriors 9 came out, it just, it's just been dying ever since. There's a bit of a dip, there's a bit of a um, hike when some more DLC comes out, but it's not going to bring back all the people that pissed off, if you know what I mean. Just think at how successful things like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and things like Call of Duty are still active in comparison with just such an active multiplayer base. Although it's not a fair comparison because obviously a hack and slash game doesn't have the sort of thrill of the kill, as it were, of a first person shooter. But you know what? I think most of you are probably going to know what I'm saying there. So in closing this video I will once again point out that loads of this is wishful thinking and yes I do realise that most of this has no chance of being added and it's just food for thought. I'd also like to restate that if Koei wants this series to make a comeback, fuck even the whole franchise to make a comeback, then they're really going to have to step up. I mean look at the, some of the other games they've released and how quickly they were forgotten. Warriors All-Stars and Warriors Archie 4. Now they're not exactly bad, just you know middle of the road and the post-launch content for them was pretty bad. Some costumes and a reused asset flip of a side mode that people only play to unlock achievements. Well fuck me. And 
the recent re-release of Samurai Warriors 4, which is Samurai Warriors 4 plus DLC, but it's being treated as a new game in the Japanese market, yet has no improvements. Now Massa isn't playable, still has the awful weapon upgrade system, the HUD is still massive, it's just so fucking lazy. As much as I love these games, I can't say I feel confident in Koei's future products considering the state Dynasty Warriors 9 was released in. So I'm saying this as as somebody who loves this series, they're really going to have to step up if they want people to continue playing them. Dynasty Warriors 9 was supposed to be the game that brought people back. It got quite a lot of people interested in because it was, you know, open world. The the way it released and just how it the overall presentation was. I think the English voice acting is just, you know, a prime example of that of how much they cared. It's just where's the where's the passion for these games gone? You know what I mean? It's it's just like they make the games for the sake of it. Uh, with with no attention to detail or love, it's just, it's just sad. But honestly, I think Dynasty Warriors Nine was meant to be one of those live service things. So I, I believe the hypothetical game here would provide a better base game for Koei to essentially abuse with mass amounts of DLC. Because this non-existent game would at least be complete from the start, unlike Nine, which over the last couple of days I've realised they're pulling the live service crap release you know a game broken and fixed later by re-adding the missing content for a price i mean it already has over what a hundred dollars worth of dlc i mean i think they're gonna have to really step it up you, you can sell a full game and then just abuse it with dlc later and most of people most of people will sweep that under the rug if the game is good but there we go i talked about dynasty warriors 9 a lot more i want than i wanted to in this one uh, let me know what ideas you liked. There are probably a few things I missed out on this, but uh, this video was about 5,000 words, so, and uh, I doubt anybody will reach the end. So, yes, thank you for watching. If you did, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, set your head on fire, eat some batteries. Um, yeah, and I will see you in probably about another two months when I decide to, you know, you know, not play Muv Love every day. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.